How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for pathology slash genetics for step one. Okay, very similar questions show up on the NBME exam. Not a dramatic clip. Okay, I'll just tell you the highlight points we need to know here. So before you get started, please subscribe my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. I'm HL man underscore medical. The link's down below. Find me on Telegram. The link's to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. So 14-year-old boy, he's brought in for a routine health maintenance exam. Height and weight are within normal limits, as are his vitals. And we have a photograph of his mouth here. Question wants to know a mutation which the following genes is most likely responsible for his condition. So this picture is showing us what's referred to as perioral melanosis, okay, OMG, sophisticated terminology that refers to hyperpigmentation around the mouth slash lips, okay, perioral melanosis is what you should describe this as. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, APC gene, wrong fucking answer. Adenomatous polyposis coli, so this gene chromosome 5 autosomal dominant causes FAP, Okay, condition, familial adenomatous uh, polyposis. So that's going to be 100% cancer risk, hundreds, two thousands of polyps in the colon. And they want you to know that you do total proctocolectomy at age 18. Okay, that's on the pediatrics forms for TCK. Sounds crazy invasive. Okay, you say, well, we don't like screen more first. No, they just want, because there's 100% cancer risk. So then a total proctocolectomy at age 18. There's obviously lower yield nonsense that students get hysterical about, such as Gardner syndrome, which is soft tissue tumors, okay, uh, like lipomas or osteomas plus FAP, or Turcot syndrome, spelled Turcot, but Turcot syndrome, which would be CNS tumors plus FAP. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, BRAF, wrong answer. This refers to melanoma, some melanomas, okay? So BRAF tyrosine kinase. I mean, that's literally all you need to know, okay? It's a, it's a proto-oncogene. You could know that as well. It's a pass-fail exam now, okay? Nothing to uh, get fanatical over, but just BRAF tyrosine kinase. It's a proto-oncogene, uh, not a tumor suppressor. It can be associated with some melanomas. There's a weird drug called vemurafenib that back during the numerical step one, when, when I took it a decade ago, we we're all shooting for a 280. It's like, holy shit, vemurafenib, let's memorize weird drugs. Absolute garbage, okay? Never seen the drug assessed once. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, MSH2, wrong answer. So this is one of the mismatch repair genes for HNPCC. So hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer. So that's Lynch syndrome. Okay, so MSH2, mismatch repair genes, microsatellite instability, MSH2, MSH6, PMS2, MLH1. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know. The, the polyps you get, which is interesting because it's hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, HMPCC, non-polyposis, but you get polyps, but it's not hundreds to thousands, which, is, which refers to APC. They might say, quote unquote, there's some polyps. In the colon, okay, and you can get gynecologic cancers as well, ovarian, endometrial. Can even get cancers in other organ systems, pancreas, duodenum. Okay, that's HNPCC microsatellite instability mismatch repair genes. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, RET gene. Wrong answer. So RET gene is a proto oncogene, and this is going to be uh, men syndromes. Okay, two A two B. That's what it refers to. So in both men 2A and men 2B, you're going to have pheochromocytoma, medullary thyroid carcinoma. In 2A, you can get parathyroid adenoma or diffuse foregland hyperplasia. In men 2B, you can get marfanoid body habitus or mucosal neuromas, okay? I'd say an interesting factoid you could be aware of for the RET gene here, this is valuable, is that for both men 2A and men 2B, you need not have all of the findings in the constellation. For example, they can just give you a medullary thyroid cancer. That's it. They just say, uh, kid who's 17 has medullary thyroid cancer. His dad also had medullary thyroid cancer. Nothing else mentioned in the vignette, and they want the RET gene. Okay, students get confused because they're like, oh, I thought that was like men to a men to b Okay, so you need not have all the findings. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, STK11, correct answer. So diagnosis here is Pugh's Hager syndrome. This is going to be perioral melanosis plus hamartomatous 
colonic polyps, homertomatous. Okay, that's an important detail. So in other versions of this question on the NBME slash USMLE, they can show you the same fucking image here. And then they have all different types of polyps listed, hyperplastic, tubular, and you just need to know it's homertomatous polyps. That's what they want you to know for Hager syndrome. All right, so perioral melanosis plus homertomatous polyps. Now you say, but wait a second, I've never heard of STK11 before. I agree with you. It's fucking nonsense. No, you don't need to know this. So you say, well, why in the world am I making a clip like this? Okay, well, it's me being an asshole in the sense that, no, I don't want you to know STK11, it's Putz Hager. The purpose of this clip is to eliminate to get there, which is how some USMLE questions are. Okay, occasionally you're able to absolutely eliminate to get there. You say, I know APC refers to FAP. I know BRAF is melanomas. I know MSH2 is Lynch syndrome, HNPCC. I know RET is MEN2A, MEN2B. So I'm left with this weird fucking gene I've never heard of before. I'm certain this is Putager syndrome. So I'll just bite the bullet and choose SDK11. Okay, that's sometimes how questions will be on USMLE. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.